About a year ago, I made a video on how to grow a butt, and in it I discussed the most effective exercises for the glutes. I'd like to expand on that information and recruit the help of my good friend Abby Polak to help with the demonstrations and explanations. First, a really quick refresher on anatomy and function. Abby's gonna take this one over. This is the gluteus maximus. It mainly performs hip extension, hip abduction, external rotation, and posterior pelvic tilt. It's the biggest muscle in the human body, which is why it gets the most attention when it comes to growing the butt. However, the gluteus medius is actually about half the weight of the glute max, and that's a pretty sizable contribution to the butt as a whole. So we're gonna go against the grain and quickly cover this muscle first. So while the glute max is about an even 50-50 split of fast and slow twitch fibers, the glute medius is slightly more slow twitch dominant. So using a slightly higher rep scheme makes sense. The glute medius has a major stabilizing role during movement, but the main way to target it directly is through hip abduction. A 2014 study by Lee and colleagues found that internally rotating or pointing your toes in was more effective at activating the glute medius. And since external rotation activates the glute maximus more, using a toes in position to hit the glute medius and a toes out position to hit the maximus gets the best of both worlds. Including unilateral exercises with a stabilization component, such as single leg hip thrusts, split squats, or walking lunges is another way to target the glute medius. Moving on to the glute maximus, Abby. Most of us know by now that the hip thrust is king or queen for the glutes. This is because the glutes are most effective when the hips are close to full extension. So let's cover some ways to make this already great exercise even more effective. First, doing some kind of pre-activation movement beforehand is a good idea. A 2016 study by Fisher and colleagues found that targeted glute training enhanced glute recruitment during more integrative exercises because of the changes in corticomotor excitability. In other words, doing glute activation drills that isolate the glutes will have activation carryover to heavier compound exercises such as the hip thrust. A 2016 study by Contreras and colleagues compared glute activation in three hip thrust variations, barbell, American, and banded hip thrusts. The barbell hip thrust keeps a neutral pelvis with the body further down on the bench. The American hip thrust uses posterior pelvic tilt with the body further up on the bench. And the banded hip thrust is the same as traditional, except using a band for resistance. The barbell hip thrust resulted in the greatest upper glute activity. However, there was no difference between the three for lower glutes. And since most women want to build the upper glute shelf the most, other data has suggested that in addition to the hip thrust, hip abduction exercises such as banded clams are great for selectively targeting the upper glute as well. Back to the hip thrust. Interestingly and surprisingly, despite the fact that the glutes do function to posteriorly tilt the pelvis, this study found that a neutral pelvic position was best during the hip thrust. Also, while 11 of the 13 subjects saw the most upper glute activity with the traditional barbell hip thrust, a few of the trainees saw better activation with the banded or American variations. So while the traditional hip thrust is probably your safest bet, you should play around with the others and see if you feel them work in your glutes better. A 2013 study found that 30 degrees of hip abduction caused more glute activation with the prone hip extension exercise. The authors explained that because the gluteus maximus is a fusiform muscle, the muscle fibers should lie in the same direction as the line of pull in order to optimize muscle activation. So when you perform hip abduction or take a wider stance, the direction of muscle pull runs parallel to the fiber of the muscle, leading to greater activation. Okay, so how do we put all of this into an actual training program? Well, first, how often should you train the glutes? The scientific literature agrees that in general, training a muscle two times per week is better than one time per week. But according to Brett Contreras, certain exercises take longer to recover from than others. So-called stretcher exercises like Romanian deadlifts, squats, and lunges need three to four days for recovery. Activators like hip thrusts and cable pull-throughs need two to three days, while so-called pumper exercises like banded sumo walks only need a day or two. So if you set up the training week with these unique recovery curves in mind, I think a sweet spot for most is hitting the glutes three to four days per week. Here's a quick example of a way you could set it up. Periodization, or how you organize your training over a longer time scale, is also important. Research indicates that periodic variation is the most important factor, so changing up your routine is important. However, you shouldn't change it up so often that you lose focus on strength progression. I personally think switching the routine up every one to three months is best. On a yearly scale, the main thing to focus on is strength progression. You should be able to move more weight at the end of the year than you could at the beginning. And at times when you're suspicious of overtraining or overreaching, take occasional deloads at 
a reduced frequency, volume, and load for a week or two to ensure proper recovery. See my overtraining science explained for more on that. So if your glute growth has been stalled, apply these sound scientific principles to your training and your progress will be better than ever. All right, what is going on guys? Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, don't click out just yet. First, I wanna give Abby a huge shout out and thank her for helping me out. She runs a really high quality science-based fitness channel herself. And also, I'm really excited to announce that I finally released my glute hypertrophy program. This is actually a full body program, uh, not just for the glutes. So all of the scientific information included in this video and my last video is all included in this manual. Uh, the glutes are hit four days per week in the first block and then six days per week in the second block of the program. Upper body is hit two days per week uh, in both blocks. And there are 34 total exercises, so lots of variety. And there are links included for how to do every exercise in the program. And there's a description of how to deload at the end of the program and then run it consecutively so that you can keep making progress after the eight weeks are up. So for the first week of launch, I'm gonna be running this program for $19.99. And after that first week, it'll go up to $29.99 and I'll probably keep it there indefinitely. So if you'd like to check it out now for the first week of the launch, I'm gonna put a button right here. Uh, you can go to my website and check it out. I also have it linked down there in the description. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got a bunch of other videos, a lot like this one. I call, my, I call them my science explained videos. Uh, so you can check them out in my playlists. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And I will see you guys again in a couple days.